Thank you, Kenny. Um, um, before I begin to talk about the future, I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about the achievements we've made in year for our primary care service. So I'm standing in front of uh, Moorcroft Medical Centre in Hanley. Uh, this is one of two bases from which we provide general practice services, the other being Moss Green uh, in Bentley. And during 1920, the primary care team led by Dr Mark Williams, Kim Stanya, Kate Lilly, have worked tirelessly to ensure that we can continue to provide high quality general practice services. Uh, that's alongside completing the transition into the trust of the two practices as part of our forward looking agenda for the integration of primary care. And along the way, we've made some significant changes. We've implemented a new clinical model, which means that we've increased the number of appointments we're able to offer, we've reduced waiting times, and we've extended the time that people get to spend with their clinician. This has improved patient experience and improved staff morale. Of course, COVID had a significant impact on our ability to deliver services, but we were able to act quickly to ensure that services remained open, accessible, and that we were able to meet demand from patients. A large part of this was our ability to offer telephone triage and where appropriate video consultation. This ensured that we were able to continue to um, offer appointments and meet the demand of patients in particularly uncertain times. This was just one of the many ways in which we've introduced digital technology to help inform service delivery. But we won't be stopping with primary care. Digital has always been part of the aspiration of this trust and throughout 2019 we made significant strides in enhancing our national reputation. Some examples of this are the work we continue to do to develop Lorenzo, our electronic patient record, to make sure that it continues to reflect updated clinical practice. It's quick, it's easy, and it's reliable for our clinicians to use. We've also co-designed and co-produced a new CAM digital portal. This has been developed in partnership with the young people it's designed to support. It offers a one-stop shop of information, advice, signposting, and where appropriate referrals into the trust for any young person who's concerned about their mental health, whether that be cyberbullying, exam related stress, um, eating disorders, anxiety, and of course, in more recent times, COVID related pressures. We've also worked to empower patients to be able to take more control over their own care and their healthcare record through the development of a patient aid app. This means that people can access their own healthcare records and have direct interaction with the clinicians in charge of their care. All this incredible work has culminated in the Trust being recognised within the new National Digital Aspirant Programme. This is a fantastic opportunity for the Trust to receive some national funding so we can really accelerate our digital transformation programme over the coming years. As part of that Digital Aspirant Programme, we're one of only 25 Trusts in, in, in England and one of only two in the West Midlands. This is absolutely fantastic news and we're really, really excited. We're absolutely committed to making the most of this opportunity. Our ambitions aren't solely limited to digital, however, and as Kenny said earlier, we are now updating our entire organisational strategy. That's in part, of course, because we've achieved our strategic goal over the past few years, which was to achieve uh, outstanding status as recognised by the CQC, but also to recognise that there's been the uh, publication of the NHS long-term plan and the emphasis that places on mental health service delivery, primary care services and the increased use of digital technology, all of which you've heard me talk about over the past few, uh, past few moments. So during the second half of 2019-20, we took an opportunity to um, talk to our service users, to carers, to other stakeholders to really begin to review our strategic ambitions and reset them in the context of, um, of the NHS long-term plan and the emphasis that places on mental health service delivery. We'll shortly be publishing the outputs from that work and I can't go into detail at this stage, but what I can say is that there are four major themes that are emerging. They are people, quality, partnerships and sustainability. And these will become the themes that we galvanise the whole organisation around and will frame all our efforts over the next three to five years. So in the digital world, we quite often get distracted by new technical innovations and digital wizardry. 
actually it's not all about technological advancement. Within there, sometimes there is an opportunity for a bit of fun. Cara, Chris, do you want to come on? Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you? We're really well, aren't we, Cara? Absolutely. We're delighted to be here and delighted to be part of the new digital vision for the Trust. Fantastic. Well, it's absolutely wonderful that you're here. Do you want to tell us what you'll be doing for us? Of course. Myself and Chris here are really excited to be the first two digital recruits to combine. So why are we doing this? Well, we know that using personal presenters in films, presentations and videos massively increases their impact. When this is combined with graphics, pictures and other content, the impact is increased even further. The problem is that this becomes more of a challenge when it is more difficult to be in situ to the film presenter. That's right, Cara. With greater numbers of staff, including senior staff working from home, this problem will be more common. And in addition, from an infection prevention and control point of view, the infection threat has increased by physically standing in proximity to a human to film them. So, to address this problem, we have developed the capability to create animated characters like myself and Chris here who can easily be lip synced with an audio recording and then embedded in films and presentations in exactly the same way as a human would be. This enables us to continue to produce high impact films, presentations and videos without the need to physically be present to film the human. All that is required is an audio recording. So, I was the first digital recruit. My name is Kara. That stands for Combined Avatar for Recovery Action. I'm the digital face of our corporate recovery program. Our aim is to create the best possible working environment and working arrangements for each team and person, enabling people to work more collaboratively, smartly, enjoyably, and flexibly across corporate services and all parts of our trust. Our ambition is to take forward the best of what we have experienced, becoming more creative, efficient, innovative, and productive by December 2021. And I'm also helping to promote something which I know is dear to your heart. That's the Program Management Office. Absolutely, and thank you for that, Cara. So at the end of 2019-20, we did take an opportunity to strengthen our program management arrangement. As you'll have heard throughout this conversation, we've got a lot of ambition and a lot of work to do, both in terms of delivering our strategic objectives, delivering the requirements of the long-term plan, but also, of course, as part of our continued response and recovery from the COVID pandemic. So it was really important, given the scale and the nature and the complexity of that change programme, that we did strengthen our programme management arrangements. And Cara here has been helping us do that. And Chris, how about you? Do you want to say a few words? Happy to do so, Chris. Always happy to help out a namesake. My name is Chris. That stands for Combined Healthcare Recovery Information Specialist. I'm the digital face of our clinical recovery project. We have created the clinical recovery project led by our clinical team, staff, and formed by our service users in order to drive forward a vision for our clinical services. Of course, our core aim will always remain to continue to deliver outstanding services and care in line with our trust quality priorities. They are to be safe, personalised, accessible and recovery focused. We want to ensure that our clinical voice and clinical knowledge is the bedrock of how we move forward. We want to ensure that our views 
of our service users are heard loud and clear as we design and deliver our new future, building on the insights and lessons provided by our patient stories and patient podcasts that we have built up over many, many years together. Well, I think it's absolutely wonderful that you and Carla are here. Very, very happy to welcome you to the Trust and really looking forward to working with you in the future. Thanks, Chris. And now, I think it's time for us to go across to our chair, David, for a live Q&A session. Okay, sounds like a great idea. Cheerio. Bye. See you all soon. Take care for now. Bye.